before the surgery, a little month, a couple months after the surgery, before I met her, um, I was not into sex, didn't care for sex, didn't want sex. Hey, how y'all doing? What is it like? So she came up with a name for y'all, <laughs> supporters, fans, whatever the case may be. She came up with the the Andes. The Andes. You get it, like Andersons. Andy. The Andes. So yeah, that might. <laughs> hey, Andes. Let me know if y'all like that or not. We can maybe remix it, but I think it'll stick. We need a name for the squad. So. You know, I think that that do just fine, whatever the case may be. Oh my God, <laughs> what is that? So what we doing, babe? So today we are gonna be doing a trans Q&A, or a trans man Q&A. So we're gonna, she's gonna ask me questions and I'm gonna be answering them all about the trans man and how everything works. And how do you go about living your life as a trans man daily? <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, so y'all, we're just gonna jump right into it. If we don't get to all of your questions, or if you have any more questions, just leave it in the comments below, and we'll make sure to put it like in the video so you can ask him, okay? And we'll make it like a part two if y'all want it. So, the first question, Mr. Air is does testosterone allow you to impregnate <laughs> does testosterone allow you to impregnate a person with a uterus is it impregnate or does it impregnate does it impregnate 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 Pregnant a female, a cis female, simply because we you know we weren't born since cis males, so we don't have the sperm to plant into a female. So no, the question is no. Um, hopefully that science does come uh, later on in life because I wouldn't mind doing that. So uh, you know, trying to have a couple babies running around with my DNA. All right. <laughs> How many is a couple? About a good five, ten. Next question. Does hormones make you gay? <laughs> Why are you like this? I don't, uh, if you want me to be honest with you, I don't know if hormones make you gay. Uh, I don't know. I never heard a case of where hormones can change your sexuality. So in some cases it might be different. I'm not sure. I haven't really did much, uh, you know, research on that one or thought much about it. But in my case, no, it didn't make me gay. Um, <laughs> I like what I like. Uh, and that, is, <laughs> that doesn't mean I like males, but you know, I do have a couple things that have to get done with them. But no, that does not mean I like males. But it's just. You know, like I said, I like what I like. And mainly it's females, so it's really all I go for. So, in my situation, no way they make me, like I said, in my situation, they make me gay, they make me change my sexuality. But others agree to disagree. So if there are any trans men out there, I would like to know any feedback on that. Uh, if in their case, it did change your sexuality, they start looking at men more. So, you know, feel free to let me know. Okay. So, when did you know? No what? That you were a man, or that you identified as man, or that you weren't in the right body. Well, I, I knew I wasn't in the right body when I was a kid. I wanted to be a boy so bad, you know, so I got called a tomboy, you know, dressed like one, played rough. Um, instead of softball, I played baseball. You know, they didn't play girls. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, 
So when I was a kid, yeah, I realized that I wanted to be a boy. But as I got older, I just started letting that thought go because of how the Christian beliefs are. So I just dropped it and said, you know, forget about it. I never identified myself as a man until I started transitioning because I didn't feel right. And I wanted to actually look like a male before I considered or identified myself as one. So I uh, went roughly almost 21 years to identify myself as a female, even though I was transitioning at 20. So can't necessarily say, you know, I identify myself as a male. Only that only happened back in June. I, I started identifying myself as a male. Okay. I had a, I had this, <clears throat> a nice question. What do you call your junk? My junk? Your man downstairs, um, <laughs> your big guy. Wow, that's a really nice way to put it. <laughs> I, I call my junk Little Johnny uh, simply because he's a junior. Because, you know, I am John Vier, he's John Vier Jr. So, and as I don't know if I discussed this already, but I do, I did have bottom surgery. So, by that, Little Johnny, I mean, Little Johnny is a real. Penis, not a scrap on of any sort. No shade. Shade. Okay, next question. Sir, how do you have sex? I have sex. <laughs> <laughs> I have sex like a normal couple, like any regular heterosexual couple would have sex. Straight raw dog. So that's how we do it. Um, it's, <laughs> it's really just normal sex like a heterosexual couple because that's what we are a heterosexual couple so yes yeah, i identify as pan so we not just gonna be saying we heterosexuals in here because sexuality is a spectrum anyway well, you know what i'm not gonna get into all that but what? and guess what <laughs> i like i like pan pizza okay i'm just gonna get that out there personal pan pizza Go ahead. i'm over <laughs> it and you next question <clears throat> do you like sex. I enjoy sex very much now. Now that I've uh, got bottom surgery, I actually know what to do with it and how to use it. Because mm. at first, before the surgery, a little month, a couple months after the surgery, before I met her, um, I was not into sex, didn't care for sex, didn't want sex. As a stud, I was a complete version. I was a full-blown version. Nobody touched me. I didn't want to be touched. I like to put my plug in here. Um, all star lesbian. So, <laughs> I, I was not a big fan of being touched. I didn't want her to touch me, even though I had the surgery before her. I uh, still didn't want her to touch me. It just wasn't something I was comfortable with. Uh, even as a stud, sex wasn't a big factor to me. Um, so, you know, but a couple months in, I got comfortable with her. So, things changed. And of course, she took something from me that I can't get back. Short, bro. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the moral of the story is, is open up and let go. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm gonna put that on. I'm, I'm gonna quote that when I edit this. Open up and let go. <clears throat> okay, three more questions, you guys. So, um, did your family and friends accept your transition? Family and friends, I was transitioning with my best friend of 10 years, with my ex-best friend 10 years, so, you know, that's who I really came out to about my transition and we were supposed to be transitioning together. Don't ask me about that situation, I might talk about it later on in life, but she, video. she's no longer transitioning, so she identifies as a stud now. So, but as far as family, my friends, I mean, I'm sorry, as far as family, my brothers, my sisters, they all accepted. My little sister, she came around, finally. Um, um, as far as my mother and my grandmother, they were highly upset and they did not accept it. You know, they said, you, you were such, you're such a beautiful girl, you know, why would you do that? And then, you know, the most hurtful thing they said to me, you're going to be an ugly dude. <laughs> Boy, was they wrong. You was fine as a female too, though. I don't think I'm going to lie to you there. Um, I'm gonna put the link right here. If y'all have not checked out that female to male transition video, go check that out. 
He was fine though. So could have still got it. So, wow. <clears throat> so. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so they, you know, the day eventually came around, and you know they accept me now. But you know they're still, you know, hard for the pronouns are still hard for them, and so I completely understand that, and I just let them ride on it. Uh, whatever case it be, those are the only two people I let slide with that pronoun stuff. So, and as far as my stepfather, don't care how he feels or whatever he has going on with his life. Um, my mother, I mean, my real father, he, he accepted me and, you know, he said I'm always gonna be his little girl, but on the outside, you know, I'm his son. So, you know, he didn't change his opinion or he felt different, treat me different, so. <clears throat> so, do you have penis envy? Or do you, are you ever jealous of other, of cis men? People that were just born men, you ever get jealous? Before I had bottom surgery, I used to get jealous of a cis male having a penis because I couldn't have one and I wanted one so bad. Um, I wanted to, you know, slang my junk around and, you know, do whatever I can to hit people in their face with it. Like her, for instance. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. What? So I did. I have penis envy, but as far as now, I do not. I don't envy anyone and no guy because I have what you have, so I can't really be jealous of something like that. So I'm a blessed individual. Okay. Okay. Two more questions, y'all, for real. Two There's more. Be upon you. Also, I'm Muslim. Hmm. Do you miss your being a woman, being a girl, do you miss anything about being a woman? I do not miss being a female. I don't. But the only part I do miss about being a female is that when I went to work, you know, I got treated as such. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to do much work, okay? <laughs> I didn't have to lift over a hundred pound boxes, you know? <laughs> but as far as, you know, anything else, I do not miss being a female. I enjoy being a male so much. It's like the greatest thing ever. It's, it's literally became my blessing to even be able to transition, so, no. Mm. I don't want to go back to that. Because I wouldn't leave myself. And one last question, the grand finale. Do you, I feel like I know this answer, but tell your subscribers, do you feel like a real man at this moment? Be real. At this moment, yes, I do feel like a real man. There are certain days where I do have my doubts and my downfalls and I start thinking, you know, what else can I do to make myself look like a real man? Or how can I act like more of one? Uh, it's just certain days it just hits out of nowhere. Um, sometimes I do have, you know, what really bothers me the most is uh, dysphoria, which is the top part of my body because I haven't had top surgery yet, which bothers me a lot. But it doesn't, it doesn't really get to me to the point where, you know, I'm sad about it, but it does make me that I did had it, so you know I could feel more of a man. I don't have to worry about nothing else but that. But um, as far as anything else, I feel a hundred percent. Like no, not a hundred percent, but I say ninety-eight percent more of a man than I've ever felt in my whole entire life. So I'm at ninety-eight percent, but I'm getting to that two percent once I have top surgery. Okay, and you guys, that was all of the questions. He answered them beautifully, and I want him to take us out. So, and yeah, if y'all have any more questions about me, my transitioning, I will be coming up with another video. Are we going to start doing this uh, Trans Talk Tuesday? Um, so as to talk about have any conversation, you know, about transitioning, and then kind of that's a big topic. And I know a lot of people are struggling trying to come out to their parents or trying to be themselves. So that's why I'm gonna do trans talk Tuesday so we can, you know, help them get better with that and try to move forward with their life. Uh, and I will be uploading a video about my uh, bottom surgery and how that went. I won't put up any photos or videos. I think that's a little bit too graphic. Um, and she won't let me. Of course.
you got any questions, Google it, YouTube it, find out that way. You not seeing his. And that's that. <laughs> so thanks, Andy's gang or Andy squad, whatever y'all want to be called, whatever the case may be. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching. Like, comment, and describe. I mean, this problem. I'm sorry. Let's drive. <laughs> My fault. You gotta act like that. That is messed up. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs>